The MIT Enterprise Forum of Texas, in association with Houston Public Media, presents Shale Gas Fracking, Sustainable New Energy Paradigm, brought to you by American Gas Association, committed to the safe delivery of clean natural gas to more than 65 million homes and businesses. Also sponsored by Oil & Gas Journal and Ensley Properties. Well, uh, I'd like to begin by just acknowledging that uh, uh, what I'm going to share with you the next few moments uh, was developed by Professor Stephen Holditch and his students. Uh, uh, he was unable to be here at the last minute, so I'm pinch hitting uh, for Steve. And this is going to be about the size of the resource. That's what I'll be sharing with you next. I'm start with the description of what we call the resource triangle. Uh, and, and then review with you uh, some new estimates of the amount of unconventional natural gas in place around the world, not just in the United States. And just a couple of slides about what's enabled this uh, new uh, huge resource. So here's a, a slide that Steve has shown around the country for years that the, calls this the resource triangle. And what is, it's shown here is uh, uh, it's illustrating the fact that all natural resources are distributed uh, uh, in, in typically in a log normal fashion and that uh, the conventional reservoirs uh, that we've been developing for a long time, uh, they have relatively small volumes of the resource in them, uh, that they're, but they're relatively easy to develop. Unconventional resources, on the other hand, uh, have uh, uh, have much larger volumes, and uh, uh, but they require either increased prices uh, or improved technology, or both, uh, to make them economic to develop. So you can see on this uh, on this chart that uh, gas shales is uh, in the unconventional category, and it's really improved technology that's driven its development. So again, all natural resources are distributed log normally, uh, gold, silver, oil, gas, any mineral resource, uh, <clears throat> which just means that the, uh, uh, the, the best deposits, the best uh, of these are hard to find because there's not very much of it, uh, but they're easy, relatively easy to extract. Uh, as you get deeper into the, into the resource triangle, you need enough price, a high enough price uh, or better technology. Okay, so these lower quality reservoirs, which only a few years ago were not being developed economically at all, uh, uh, are enormous in volume. And, uh, um, <coughs> and in fact, the, the, the numbers I'll show you in a moment is, are, are based on uh, extrapolating what's gone on uh, in just the last few years in the United States to the entire world. So the bottom line is there should be very large volumes of gas in unconventional reservoirs throughout the world. Here's a projection that I think is probably a little on the low side, but this is showing, this is a projection from the IEA uh, projecting uh, energy usages and uh, um, and what, it, what you see here is the, the increasing role of natural gas. And of course, here in the United States, this is dramatic. Uh, this is a, a graph of uh, natural gas by, by source in the United States as a function of time. So uh, you can see where we stand right now in about 2012, uh, how the shale gas portion of this uh, supply has risen very dramatically in a very short time and is expected to continue to rise over the next several years. So our consumption, as you see there, of, 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 of uh, gas is around 24 trillion cubic feet per year. And uh, uh, unconventional gas, this is shale gas and tight gas uh, reservoirs and coal bed methane. Those three comprise 13 TCF of that total already. So more than half of our total gas supply. Now let's look at, let's, we're going to extrapolate now uh, in a moment to the, to the globe. But uh, uh, the basis for this is, is first an assessment of the resource in the United States, where of course there's been so much more development uh, that it's much better known. And the maps like this, which show the, uh, the major shale plays in the United States, you can hardly draw them fast enough to keep up. Uh, th this one was from 2010, and it's quite out of date, uh, those of you 
familiar with the Texas activity, look at the little speck of Eagleford there on this map, and it's much, much bigger than that now, just two years later. Um, there are other shale plays that are coming on now that are not even on this map, just of the U.S. lower 48. So it is a, just a huge resource. Now here's uh, the results of a study that Professor Holditch and his students uh, recently completed, and I just want you to look at a few of these numbers, which are really staggering. Um, let me, uh, uh, I thought we'd translate these acronyms, but I'll quickly uh, translate for you. The first one is Australia and Asia, then North America. CIS is essentially Russia and former Soviet Union countries. Latin America, the Middle East, Europe, and Africa. Okay. And the, 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 uh, the headings stand for oil, original gas, and place. So this is the total amount of gas uh, in these different uh, unconventional sources. And the, the, on the right, TRR stands for what we call technically recoverable reserves. So with current technology, this is how much of this resource can be recovered. So if you'll just look at the shale gas column in the, in the TRR side, that's how much potential production there is available. And uh, um, uh, so uh, the, the number for the world, 12,637, that's trillion cubic feet. And you might recall from a minute ago that U.S. consumption is about 25. Okay, so hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of supplies what this means. What's made this happen? Two technologies that uh, have grown tremendously in our industry, horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing. Uh, horizontal drilling has, has been uh, uh, a foundation of shale gas development. Uh, much of this was developed uh, during the 90s in the Austin Chalk uh, developments in, in Texas. And it, then uh, the hydraulic fracturing process, when applied multiple times in horizontal wells, allows the recovery of, of uh, very significant volumes of gas so that these wells are commercial. So in fracturing, of course, we uh, pump uh, a slurry of sand and uh, liquid into the well at a sufficient pressure to break the rock and uh, create long fractures that extend out into the reservoir and connect large volumes of, of the rock to the well. It is a massive undertaking. This is an overhead shot of a, of a uh, shale gas fracturing operation. A uh, lot of equipment, a lot of people involved. So in conclusion, this is a cover from Time Magazine recently, and the question is, uh, this, this rock could power the world, that's a piece of shale. <coughs> this rock will power the world uh, if we continue to uh, effectively apply this te technology. Thank you. <coughs>